Welcome to Herbert S. Eisenberg Intermediate School 303. This building in Coney Island may not be much to look at from the outside, but inside there's educational magic happening every day. The 6th, 7th, and 8th grade students who attend IS-303 are acquiring crucial critical thinking skills and learning how to find reliable, trustworthy information important to them by studying an emerging academic discipline called news literacy. Along the way, they're also learning how to become savvy news consumers and more informed citizens. News literacy means to me going on the internet and deconstructing a source uh, or a current event into finding the core of it and forming an opinion. Because once you form an opinion, you're going to stick with that opinion, you're going to look it up, and then you're going to back it up. And then you're going to tell your classmates about that. And then you're going to evaluate it. News literacy is a way for um, students and adults to find out news and its accuracy and where it came from and why it's important. News literacy means to me uh, going online, looking at events, f making an opinion on those events, and supporting them with the evidence that you found. News literacy also incorporates an awareness of current events that's second to none, and it helps us develop critical thinkers. Here at IS-303, the focus on news literacy starts at the top with its dynamic principle Carmen Amador. Trying it at the middle school level, we've definitely proven that our kids are not only articulate, but they can also speak about pretty much everything that's going on in the world. So if my middle schoolers can do it here in Coney Island, why can't other middle schoolers do it? Amador relies on a talented team of specially trained news literacy educators like Mary Sol Solano. Everybody seems to be on the same page in terms of supporting us and trying to become better news consumers and integrating the news literacy into the curriculum. So we've gone full force, full steam ahead with that. Solano and other teachers here, like Rosemary Brucolari, employ a variety of techniques and tools culled from the Center for News Literacy at Stony Brook University, such as a 48-hour news blackout and the use of memorable acronyms to help middle schoolers embrace key news literacy concepts. One key example, I'm Vain. I'm uh, Vain helps me a lot when I'm reading passages because like it's organized and like, can I see the letters of it? I is independent, M is multiple sources, the V means verification or verify, the A means authoritative, I think we had that, and I stands for informative, and N stands for name. Every time you have to have the students use something with acronyms, they're able to look at that and go back to it and say, okay, is this an independent source? Was this person biased when they were saying it? Because did they have anything invested in it themselves? So I think that when they use the I'm vain, it helps them to break it down and look at the bigger picture and kind of analyze it a little bit at a time. And that's kind of what we want them to do as they're working towards be becoming critical thinkers. It helps me find like the accuracy of my news and what I'm reading is it reliable, who made it, and yeah. These middle schoolers say that studying news literacy has changed their lives in some profound ways. News changed my life because now that I'm in news literacy, I want to learn more about news and I know there's some interesting pieces of news out there that I want to learn about and before, I didn't really care about news. My students are definitely asking themselves questions that adults are asking them, and it's great because it's making them become more of a 21st century learner. Even if it's not in the classroom, if you find something very interesting, you have to look it up because if you just look at one source, it's not going to help you out and you're not going to get all the details that you need. When somebody asks you something, you have to back it up with something that's true. Like, I just find it interesting. Like, to be able to know what's going on and not be like blank-minded and not knowing anything that's happening in our world. News literacy taught me that you can't trust everything that they tell you and you have to actually look into everything, the person who's writing it, the actual website, and everything. But when I came into the news literacy room for the first time and my teacher explained what it was, um, I thought I would definitely be hooked on it. Skeptics say that the very idea of news literacy and its underlying concepts, such as the need for verification and source evaluation, 
are beyond the ability of preteens such as the students at IS-303, but they push back against that notion. The world is advancing and we need to go with it, so we might as well stay up to date with this stuff. We're able to do it. Not just adults, like little kids could even do it. I would respond to the people who are saying that news literacy is not appropriate for this age of children. These kids are going to be running the world one day when we're old and we're not going to be able to do this. You want to get them exposed to the news as much as they can. When people doubt what students can do at any age, they'll be very surprised. I mean, if you give, I think, a fifth, a five-year-old or six-year-old, seven-year-old, you know, if you give them the opportunity to do things, they will impress you. Parents, uh, other support staff, children themselves will buy in to news literacy once they know what what it means to them. It means becoming uh, smarter at what you're reading, analyzing the text, using text-dependent information to make some decisions that are going to help you to take action or not take action. I think it's good not to share information that you don't know if true because I got in fight because of that. It w I said something, then the person tried to say it wasn't true, and then I heard the real story, and then it escalated to a fight. If it's not reliable, then what's the point? Like, you need to know what's really going on and you need to know the truth. It's, you're right as a basic human. Those are just some ways that you can get to see how their own perceptions impact how they view the news and how they think about things. You know, sometimes we're biased and we don't even realize it. So if they can start to see that their own perceptions and what they think influences how they think, then maybe we can also get to break that down a little bit at a time so that they can become better news consumers. Once news becomes meaningful to them, it's happening in their neighborhood, around them, in their world, and we help them understand why that's important, I think they'll start to learn what it means to be a, an educated news consumer and why that's important, even if they're a middle schooler. I want them to be be masters of their own domain, and, and that would be being able to be literate news consumers. To make the internet valuable, that makes sure that it's reliable.